This is understanding the whys behind what in the hell you are doing. Exactly. You know, don't do it like this. It's that. Do it. I, just, I don't care how you do it, just do it. Yeah, do it. But understand the why is behind it. What do you behind it. One thing with the tech reelings too that we find is they were taken out of context. A lot of times it was designed to be done as it should be behind cover or concealment. Fortunately. Hey everyone, it's Steve Fisher with Sentinel Concepts and I'm here today with my good friend Jeff Blutman from Practically Tactical. We're going to talk to you today and walk you through the various reloads with handguns and the whys behind them. What's going on Jeff? Hi. We're going to do some reloads and stuff dog. Awesome. <laughs> so we're going to talk about a tactical reload because it's tactical. Yep. The speed reload and the slide lock emergency out of battery whatever reload you want to call it today like everything else. So for me generally the reloads are a proactive or reactive kind of thing. And it's generally the gun's out of bullets, the gun stopped working, or I just want to put more bullets in the gun to get the gun back up to capacity right away. Sure. All right. So, which one do you want to start with? Uh, let's start with uh, speed and then do tactical. What do you think? And then we'll do emergency. Okay. Good with that. Cool. All right. So, about the speed reload. So, what I want you to do is come up, fire good cadence of rounds on the steel, give me good hits on it, then execute the speed reload. All right. All right. See how we do. Holster. Sticky mag issue. Yeah, a little bit. These are, oh, this is actually brand new. Yeah, it's a brand new Gen 4 ish, whatever mag. So, it may not absolutely work really well in your gun. So, one thing we tell people about with Glocks, especially, is obviously make sure your mags drop free as best as possible. Everything we know that that's not always a realistic possibility. So, a lot of times we'll find guys that they present the gun, fire the gun, they'll come off the gun hit the magazine release on the way down with either the offhand or the other hand, strip the mag, reinsert the next mag to ensure positive ejection of the magazine. And I'm a huge fan of that during an emergency reload because my hands are together, I'm at slide lock, I rip it out. I'm also, you know, uh, building in that, that repetition of um, as far as like fixing a double feed or type three malfunction sure. and stuff like that. I figure with the speed reload, I want to just try to make the amount of time that I got a partially loaded gun as small Correct. as possible. Yeah. Exactly. No, 100%. We want to keep the gun loaded as long as possible. We don't want to be pulling the gun apart when we don't have to necessarily. Right. More like when we want to. So, okay. All right, cool. Let's take a look at the tactical reload or reload with retention or some kind of reload like that that's called. And there's a lot of ways to do this. Yes. So I'm going to do it just the way that I learned many moons ago, and then you could show me yeah. maybe, maybe it's the same. Who knows? Absolutely. All right. You know, it's funny because I defaulted to how I originally learned it, which was mm -hmm. like overhand all the way back in, in the in the mid 2000s from tactical response. Tactical response is big on, you know, ejecting that round sure. and stuff. Is it necessary? Well, no, it's not. But no. if you're uncertain, do something with the gun. Yeah, sure. If you're absolutely uncertain, do something with the gun. Obviously, we know we just fired X number of rounds, 5, 15, I don't know, whatever. The gun is still in battery at this point in time. We're simply doing a swap of magazines at the gun. So for me personally, I've never subscribed to the rack after the reload kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So it's just a personal preference. You know, some, some schools, they all have their thoughts and reasons behind it. Myself personally, if the gun's in battery and the gun's working, right. all I'm doing is taking the mag out, putting a new mag in the gun. Well, the other thing is this. It's like, I don't think that it's an overcomplicated issue. No. When I rip this mag out, I see there's bullets. And I just had this thing go slam home, you know, into battery. So sure. I don't think it's necessary if I'm doing a reload with retention to rack that slide. You know? and, I've, and that's something that over many years I got away from. Mm -hmm. You know, it didn't happen overnight. I was, I, I, I weighed the pros and cons of each way of doing it. And I'm like, look, 
If I rip that out, I'm already in the shooting process. I see the friggin' bullets. The, the shiny stuff in there. The shiny, shiny stuff, stuff in, in the there. Chamber. Don't don't lose a, a shiny thing. Yeah, absolutely. We'll, we'll talk a little bit about the tech reload coming up, but I think there's some key points to hit on it. Okay. So let's go through. Let's set the gun up for an emergency reload, <laughs> slide lock, out of battery, something, whatever reload. So I'm gonna just run it to slide lock. All right. <clears throat> deal so there we have the hand comes off the gun rips the magazine out of the gun puts the gun puts the mag back in the gun not an overly complicated task one thing that i try to do is i try to stay with the same consistency all the way across the board yeah, for sure. all my reloads so you know what if, if you're smart enough you understand the gun you understand what you're doing and the why's behind it i don't care right as long as the gun gets loaded ammunition goes back in the gun and the gun starts working again and i think that's the important part about this is understanding the why's behind what in the hell you were doing exactly you know don't do it like it's that that uh that uh, age-old adage which like the elephant is trained as a baby to go around the circus on the chain sure and they slowly remove the chain and it still keeps going in the circle because it remembers the chain i have no idea what the hell that is about but that's cool think about it I know it's I tried response. to. It's a trained response. <laughs> it's a trained yeah. response and nobody knows why the hell they're doing exactly. it. Exactly. You know what I mean? No, exactly. So one thing that we find with TAC reloads, it's become this range kata trick, mm -hmm. so to speak. Guys are doing it just to keep the gun up to capacity, mainly for next relays. I get it. I understand it, that we can talk about it in the context of, yeah, well, I've just fired X number of rounds, solved the problem. I want the gun top back off, ready for the next problem, the next fight, the next altercation to occur. So we're just re-ingraining those habits in our, in our brain with the gun. Factually, we know that the number of reloads that have actually occurred in civilian gunfights right. is very, very small. Or shootings, I should say, not necessarily gunfights. So the average citizen is most likely not going to be performing a reload. Not saying that it's not out there and that it hasn't happened, but the odds of it are very slim, so we still prepare for it, we still train for it. Yeah, and I, I like the way that you address it in the class, and tell me if I'm wrong, but you call it ammunition management. Mm -hmm. And I, and I like the way because that's kind of like a, a little bit freeing is that look if you think you're if you're managing the ammo the way that you wish to manage your ammo then by all means do it <laughs> just do it I, just, I don't care how you do it just do it yeah do it but understand the why is behind it one thing with the tech reloads too that we find is they were taken out of context a lot of times it was designed to be done as it should be behind cover or concealment mm -hmm. fortunately most classes don't do that enough of which no big deal you know there's always structural blocks and periods of it but my personal preference is when performing a tech reload it's usually going to be done behind cover or concealment of some sort. And I will literally treat it like I do a speed reload sometimes, where I will simply get behind a piece of cover, I'll execute it, dump the mag, reinsert the next magazine while keeping an eye up on the playing space to see what's happening around me. Then, if everything looks good, I'll simply reach down at my feet, take yeah. a knee, pick up the mag, retain the mag, and then prepare to move out or make that phone call to 911, whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. So for myself, a couple ways of doing it, you know, it depends if it's behind cover, behind concealment, or if I'm out in the open. Sure. So there, there is variations on the whys and hows to do it. Okay. And it's all in context. So there'll be times where I'll treat it like a speed reload where I'm behind cover, and then I'll pick up and retain that magazine. Or I'll simply do it here at the gun, retain the mag, put it away. Question comes up on tack reloads, where does that magazine go? Well, how many magazines are you carrying exactly. and why? So generally, for me, it's a gun and a reload. I, I don't need 45 magazines on me. You, you know, it's just, just nature of the thing. Everybody's like, I need six reloads. Shut up. So you need at least one good reload for the gun. If you want to carry If you want to carry reloads, it, bro, I'll have at it. You know, but I'm like, I need one 15, 17, 10, 12, eight-round mag, whatever it is, the gun that I'm carrying that day. So for me, that magazine goes back into pouch. Yeah, why? Because that's where I'm used to pulling my ammunition from. So if I do retain that magazine, it goes back in that one empty pouch. I'm good there with it. Now it's back in its home. And if I need it again, it's where I'm used to drawing it from. Not in my pocket with my chapstick knife, flashlight, so forth and so on. Yeah, and other people, like, if, if they carry multiple reloads, they'll go and put, put it here. Right. You know, and then they'll go for the next magazine there. It depends on how many magazines you're carrying. Uh, I'm of the... I guess the mind that, you know, sometimes I'll carry a backup gun, mm -hmm. uh, depending on like clothing type and stuff or stuff, but um, I'm going to go back into that magazine pouch. Yeah, absolutely. You know, that's where I've got a mazillion uh, different repetitions of going right to there in order to get that gun back up and running. Absolutely. All right, so let's take a look at them again real close. 
slow so the viewers can see the actual manipulations going on in your hands. Thanks a lot for watching. Make sure you go check out AlliancePoliceTraining.com. Uh, That's where we're at right now. Thanks a lot to them for letting us film. Also, go to GreatLakesAmmo.com and you can enter the code, promo code PRACTAC10 to get 10% off ammo. That's the ammo that we're firing today. Great reloads, great, great ammo for training. So thanks a lot, Steve, for taking us through. Appreciate it. Not a problem, bro. Anytime.